So, um, I'm a PhD student within the Distributed Systems Group at the University of Portsmouth, but um, I don't actually work on any of the software. This is all done by Cambridge University and a few other people. So, uh, well, I know a little bit about it, and I'll try and explain how how Zen works for you. Uh, it's not my software. But also, I, I don't think I can answer every question, but I'll do my best. But some of the deep dark technical stuff may be a bit across though. So Zen is a, a virtual machine monitor for the normal x86 that you run Linux on. I'll, I'll explain what the virtual machine monitor means. So I'll talk about why we want to do virtualization. So in a nutshell, this is all about running more than one operating system on the same physical machine. Why would you want to do that? Uh, how does Zen try and do this for you? And what other software does this? Um, the architecture is Zen. So um, more sort of in-depth look at how Zen works. One of the coolest features is live migration, which means that you can move one of your virtual machines from one computer to another computer without shutting it down. So there's a little bit about that. I think that's probably the coolest thing that Zen can do. Uh, I'll explain what you need to do if you want to try Zen at home. It's not as bad or as scary as you might think. And then uh, we'll talk about some of the feedback that some of the users have had about Zen and what they're going to do with it in the future. So, what is this Zen thing? Um, the idea, like I said, is to be able to run more than one operating system on the same machine. So, some of you will be familiar with the uh, virtualization techniques, but some people won't be. So, um, Zen um, have a, criteria, a set of criteria for what the specific things they're trying to do with their project. They want to be able to run the normal operating systems, all the popular ones like Linux and Windows. Uh, they want to be able to scale uh, to around 100 VMs, they said in their initial um, spec for Zen version 1. At the moment, it seems that the, uh, the limiting factor is memory. So, as long as you have enough RAM, you can keep on going at the moment. They want to try and do this securely, which if you know anything about virtualization, is a bit of a nightmare. I'm not really going to talk about that, but if you have questions about it, I will try and answer them. And uh, the idea is to try and get close to native performance, which again, is very hard. Uh, they have quite a novel approach to uh, trying to do this. So Zen is a virtual machine monitor. What that means is it's a, a software that provides a set of services for creating and managing virtual machines. So uh, people get a bit confused when they see virtual machine monitor. So Zen is a software that lets you run VMs. So why would you want to virtualize? Why do you want to run more than one operating system on uh, one physical machine. I'm sure that you can think of ideas, and there, there are some on there. I'm not going to go through them all. But if there are a few that don't immediately spring to mind. Probably the, when I was writing this talk, the most inter interesting one that I um, found was that uh, you can, by managing resources in your VM, you can provide quality of service for your applications. So if you sign up for a certain amount of um, um, power for a web server or whatever, um, you can guarantee that you'll be able to provide that, even on a, uh, a heavily loaded machine. Because you can uh, you can put your application inside a VM and then migrate it to a machine with more resources if there's contention. Um, the other one, of course, is I think we'll think of is you can run Windows and Linux on the same machine, which uh, not just for us at home is a very handy feature for people who use this in business environment. So there's, the problem is the normal x86 chip that you have in your computer uh, wasn't built with virtualization in mind. And there's some stuff that it can't do, basically, the things that you have to do in software to make virtualization work. And th there are two ways of doing adding that functionality. You either uh, trap some things that the operating system does and uh, modify them, um, which is slow. And it's probably the first way of doing the virtualization or you have to modify the guest OS to do things in a slightly different way. You can get much better performance from Currently, uh, this is for current modern x86s that we use. So there, there are two more techniques for accessing the actual resources in a VM after you've chosen how you're going to do your virtualization. And you have a fully virtualized machine, so the whole thing presents itself as a normal x86 processor, and the guest operating system doesn't really know any different. Or you do what Zen calls power virtualizing, which is where you present real and virtual resources, depending on what you're trying to do. So they're trying to do the, get the best of both worlds. But I, I can talk more about that if you want. It's basically about how the device can work. Well. So uh, Zen's not the only thing that you can uh, use to doing this. 
probably the most popular, well-known one is a user node Linux. So it's a GPL project, and it, it lets you run Linux on top of Linux, basically. So you have to modify the Linux kernel for this to do this. So it uses power virtualization like Zimbas. And then the companies that use user mode Linux to provide uh, cheap hosting of um, full VMs for people to use. So you get roots on your computer, basically. And uh, one of those companies is Black Mark. I think they're the first in the UK to do it. And that they've been trialing Zen. So you'll be able to buy Zen and VMs from Black Mark. So. The other one is a commercial program called VMware, which I think probably most people have heard of. That does full virtualization, which, as I've already mentioned, is quite slow. But this does mean it can run any, pretty much any x86 operating system without modification, because it just looks like a normal x86. The, the two flavors are workstation, where you run Linux, and then you have um, VMware software that uses kernel modules to um, speed things up, and then you run your operating system on top of Linux. Or ESX server, which uses a VMware kernel, which is booted when the machine comes up, and then every operating system is a guest. This is the same way the Zen works. So in Zen, you don't boot Linux and then run things on top of it. You boot the um, Zen kernel, and then everything is a guest operating system. It's probably one of the, the, the biggest misconceptions when people start using Zen, and you get very confused if you don't realize that's how it works. So they Zen have some jargon that they've come up with for themselves. Virtual machines are called domains, and uh, the Zen VMM they call the hypervisor. So I'll probably say domain and hypervisor from now on, but just so you know, that's what I mean. This is an old diagram that I've nicked of the Zen architecture. This is actually Zen, um, Zen 1, but for uh, ease of explaining how this stuff works, the older diagram is much clearer because uh, Zen 2 and 3 just got more complicated. So in a nutshell, this is how it works. So you've got your physical machine down here, so this is your actual hardware. You then put a hypervisor, which is uh, all the Zen code, and then you run all of your guests on top of Zen. You have a special um, guest, or domain, as they call them. When you, um, after you boot Zen, you have a, um, at the moment, I think you can only use Linux, but you have, the first domain that comes up is called domain zero, and it has uh, access to the hypervisor to make it do stuff. So, via the admin interface, when you're in domain zero, you can create and manage VMs but you can only do it from within domain one. So typically, domain zero has a privileged kernel, so it's allowed to um, see your hardware. But when you run other VMs, especially uh, Linux, I'm, I talk about Linux a lot, mainly because we all use it, um, you normally use a stripped down kernel which doesn't have access to the physical devices and will go by the virtual interfaces that Zen presents. So th this was just to give you an idea of how much stuff needs to be modified for uh, Zen guest operating systems. Then this is Linux 2.4 on Windows XP for Zen 1. Then all these percentages have gone down, but the kind of in a nutshell bit is only the um, OS um, specific stuff in Linux in the end in 2.6 needed changing. There wasn't that much work. XP had some problems, mainly well some stuff like um, maybe XP runs in Ring or stuff like that. So, um, one of the coolest features of Zen, when you've got your virtual machines, if you have more than one physical server, all running Zen hypervisors, is that you can move a VM from one machine to another machi machine, as long as you have the resources. So, I'm not going to go into too much detail about how that works. If you're familiar with different methods of migration, you'll probably you see that this is a hybrid of, hybrid of two, two methods. So essentially, what you do, you reserve space on uh, the VM that you want to go to iteratively copy the memory of your running VM. And uh, when you've copied everything apart from the stuff that's changing, you pause that VM, you copy the rest of the memory, which hopefully will be small by now, stuff that hasn't, the stuff that's still still different. Start the VM on the new machine and use ARP to signal the network that the IP address has moved. And uh, I think they've, some of the examples they've used are running Quake 3 server with um, people connected to the machine, so a game server, migrating it and then looking at the impact. And uh, I think that they get uh, like uh, it's in sort of tens of milliseconds downtime. So this is just this is amazing if you know about virtualization. But um, it means that essentially stuff on the wire is getting lost. But pretty much everything else is cool. And uh, this is very very cool. So if you provide disk access by NAS and you do this. So if you're doing it yourself, you might use NFS. But it, it, it doesn't support moving of the, like, the local resources like some migration things. Aren't all the, um, all the Quake players going to complain about 10 minutes in downtime? 
Yeah. 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 Y
Um, how well does it deal with uh, something like LVM? So if I if I've got an LVM you know, on, on, an, on an existing system, I've got an LVM port, then can I take can I create a new logical volume in that and use that as in my domain naught and then use that as storage for my subsequent domains? I think the recommended method of using Xen on a local machine is having that's totally not using it. So yes. How do you make disks available to guest operating systems? Well, I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> <laughs> so this continues on from Hugo's question. Basically, um, the main NORC interrogates the disks, has access to the hardware. And uh, then within the hypervisor, you create, it will create mappings for you between the physical disk and they call them virtual block devices, which are then exported to the VMs. They just look like SCSI drive, basically. So this is part of their power virtualization rather than full virtualization. To where they get their fairly cool performance. By not supporting NTP cards, what happens if you've got So basically, it just didn't. Zen 2, I think, won't boot if you compile NTP support for the kernel. I don't know with the nitty gritty of it. In a nutshell. Yeah, it just didn't, didn't do it. Right. I believe, I mean, this is stuff that we've read and discussed about. Presumably, you could test that. Uh, no, okay, no, no. Got any idea when is the AMD is doing the same, that uh, VTX are doing a similar but not identical one called the Pacifica that's supposed to be out at some point? Just wonder if you've heard some when Zen might be running on those chips or even when those chips might be out. I don't know, although I do know that Zen is closely affiliated with, well, it seems to be closely affiliated with both Intel and AMD, which is good. This is, I think. I've got the impression that Intel paid for quite a lot of this, but yeah. it doesn't seem that there's going to be exclusive in Intel technology. Okay. Presumably at some point the AMD CP virtualization or virtualizable CPUs and the Intel ones will converge in much the same way as X86 64 stuff did. Yeah. It's going to be very cool when it happens. I mean, to, if you want to use, I mean, this will change what we do in Linux, especially when people want to move from Linux. To, uh, from Windows to Linux, it will change the migration path because you'll be able to run both OSs at the same time on your normal desktop. This is going to be kind of interesting and it will be Why interesting to see what happens. Sorry? Just, just read the Microsoft website and know you can do everything you want to run Windows. I don't, I don't think there's anybody here that went from Windows to Linux, so <laughs> took Windows, deleted it, installed Linux, and that was it. <laughs> this is why we have dual booting. This will allow simultaneous dual sure. booting. Uh, I Hopefully it will happen. <coughs> Obviously, from a, a server perspective, it's very cool because one of the things that holds people back seems to be things like Exchange. You'd be able to run Exchange in <coughs> Windows on your machine, and then you'd be able to run Linux machines on there as well. I'm saying, well, Exchange is well known for holding people on Exchange. <laughs>